YouTube, my name is Sean Connors and welcome back to the Outsiders channel. And in this video tonight, we are not going to be examining eight ways to gain endearing confidence because we did that a while ago. But why is it there? Because seven of you asked the next logical question to this one, which is, I've got confidence and or I've gained confidence, but my games never seem to reach beginning, middle and end. I can't run my campaign. It never gets to the end point. And that's what's really eroding my confidence away. So what do I do to get there? Well, there's a, a number of things that we're going to explore in just a moment, and I hope you'll come back to see them. But the first thing I need to tell you all now, and it's one of the fundamental keystones to this, as will become apparent, is you have to adopt this very simple philosophy. And it's one that you should be easy for all of us to adopt. Ultimately, we have to be losers. Why don't you come back and see why in a moment? Good with me, hey? Still want to find out why you need to be a great loser to be a great GM? Well, we're not there yet. We need to take some steps together. So let's explore one of the most fundamental core principles, first of all, to running a consistent campaign. And that is, the game's about the story, not the rules. Now this may sound a little odd when we're talking about, you know, trying to get a game to a finishing point. Why are we fixating here on rules? Well, because you need to remember something very important here. Players don't come to you and say, what a great job you did on getting the rules exactly right tonight. That was fantastic. They don't remember that one, two, three, five, fifteen, twenty years later. They always remember story. And it's very, very important to focus on that point and really succinctly draw it into your head. Drill it in. Because it, remember the film Pirates of the Caribbean and there's the opportunity to leave Jack behind because he's not following the code. Yeah, They eventually realise that at the end of the day, the code, which is really the rules, code for the rules, um, are merely guidelines. And this is very important, actually, because that's exactly what the rules are. They're guidelines They're for you to interpret. So it's very, very important. If you want to run a consistent game, a game that's going to last a long period of time, there are going to be situations that come up in your game where you've got to make some judgment calls. Now, you might hear things where people will say, it's the rule of call cool over the rules. That's, that's a very good one, that is. Actually, I really like that which is absolutely right. If you think there's a better way to actually interpret the situation that's going to be more fun for the player, you go for it, above anything else you've written down or decided upon. Um, you know, if, if you're not sure what to do in a situation, just say the player succeeds. Yeah? At detriment to anything else that you've prepped or worked out. You see where I'm going? The theme is there. You know, it's not about you, is it? It's about the players. Yeah? Games are not fun when you succeed. You know, that's the reality. You know, when you succeed, uh, it doesn't really mean a lot, does it? If you TPK or partial party kill the party, there may be reasons why these things happen, and that's acceptable. But if it happens consistently, it's not a you versus them situation. So your games are clearly, there's something wrong when this happens, and you're never going to reach a finishing line because something, something isn't fun. It isn't fun anymore for the players around your table. I'm not saying it's going to be a cakewalk. Far from it. Players love challenge, I've always said that. But there's challenge, and there's something fundamentally wrong with your game. And that's the key. You need to be thinking along the lines of the story over the rules. Think about that for a minute. Yeah? Where's the fun? Yeah? Because, you know, when the game is, when everybody's dead, you know, when it's been a TPK around your table, yeah, yeah, well done. Great game. Was it? Or is that the end of the campaign? Probably likely it's the end of the campaign, it's the end of the story. And that's basically it. So by winning, you lose. But by losing, you win, which is quite interesting, really. Um, and it's not about fudging dice rolls or any of that stuff. I'm far f I don't believe in any of that stuff at all. I like to see the dice and let them fall where they will. But it's actually about understanding that the rules are guidelines. And it's your job to interpret them and try to make it as fun as possible. And great games do not hamper you to make those decisions. Great games encourage you to make those decisions. So I wanted to start there about, about the rules first and get you to see some of the fluff around the edges before we move on to you're the GM, own the game. So let's go to that section. Now, in this part, we're going to talk about you're the GM, own your game. It is about ownership. You have to take ownership of your game. And it's about you having excru you know, having a persona that makes you confident. Yeah, we can give you all the tips in the world, but you have to fake it till you make it. It's a great quote that John Allen Large uses a lot, and I'm really with that. And I think it's really important that you make players aware right off the bat of a campaign, particularly if you're a new GM or an inexperienced GM, 
or sorry, new GM, inexperienced GM, or even an experienced GM, that you're struggling with your campaigns. They're not reaching a conclusion and you're worried about that. You need their help. There's no harm in that. And get them more involved. Get them to do things for you. Yeah, they can look things up during the game yeah, to speed up play. They could run the initiatives for you. There's a number of things they can do. It's your game. You decide how you want to utilize them and get them involved. And actually, what we talk about, getting things involved, let's roll some dice. That's always nice to do. And let's see what comes. Ah, well done, dice. That's excellent. Thank you for popping in there. Yeah, get them to do things for you. Yeah, get them to roll some dice for you. Get them to do whatever it takes for it to be a success. Yeah, it doesn't matter what it is that gets them into the game. It doesn't matter the point because what it does is it helps them understand that you're trying for them to make it a success. And that's the key, making it for them. You know, you've got GMing tips at your disposal. You know, there are a number we've given over the years. There's a lot of great resources out there. You know, you've got my confidence tips. You know, you can uh, use a sphinx's smile, occasional wry smile. Yeah, the slow nod. The meaningless roll behind the table, out in front, actually. And using things like, you really want to do that? Are you sure? Always is interesting when you do it sparingly. That's the key. And people will sometimes say to you, you know, oh, it doesn't work that way. Remember about the rules? It doesn't work that way. Um, you just have to say to them, usually it doesn't. Now get them scrambling back into their books and thinking, what's he come up with? What's he conjured? See, it's about faking it till you make it. It's about using what's around you. It's about making sure that you use all those tips at your disposal. Create the game that you feel happiest in, okay? And the reason for this happiness, why it's so critical to this part of building the long-term campaign, is pretty simple, really, because if you're happy in the environment you create around you, you've got a bloody good chance that that game is going to go the distance, isn't it, when you think about it? So whatever tips work for you, cherry-pick them. John uses another great example. Be a magpie is one of my favourite examples. Um, he says about you steal anything that's not nailed down. Totally agree with that. Absolutely spot on. And that's the point. So what you're doing, in essence, is you're taking the best bits of everything that you like and using that in your games because it makes you feel great. Then go ahead and do it. Never losing sight of the fact who the audience is. And now we're going to look at the third and final part about why it's so critical to be a loser. All these, this, this part of this video has led up to this point. Why it's so important to embrace being a loser. Why is it that so critically important? Because it's actually your job to lose. Yeah, it's never fun when you win as a GM. It really isn't. There, there should never be any fun in that. And nobody will ever look back in 20 years time and say, what a great victory you had that night. They'll talk about your story. They'll talk about you as a GM, but they'll never talk about any TPKs or anything like that. They may be fun stories, but not themselves. It's not something that ever gets remembered in great fondness, I can tell you. So it's very, very important to realize that. And I'm not saying for one minute, as I've said already through, it's not about fudging things or cheating things. Obviously, character deaths are critically important to all great games. But it's about understanding the fact that when the players see through your storylines, when they outguess you, when you can't hit the side of a barn door with a dice, it doesn't matter. Okay, It's not important. Don't beat yourself up over it. It's critical to embrace the loser side. That's fine. There's no problem with that. Sell it to the players if you want. Ah, damn. Doesn't matter, does it? They feel good. You should feel good. Yeah. Doesn't matter about the rest. It's about embracing these elements. What are the elements again? It's understanding the rules are unimportant to story. About fake it till you make it. Magpie everything. Steal everything that's not down down. Only take on board things that make you feel good about your games because ultimately it's your campaign. And then it's understanding the rule around the fact that it's your job to lose. Once you understand those things, campaigns will start to work for you. Now we're going to break it down a little bit further. Run loads of one-shots. Yeah, Do some one-shot games first before you go into a fully run campaign. Just say to your players, I want to do a few one-shots like I would do at a convention. Make them super exciting. Use lots of props. Make it really come alive. Do the same thing. Once you've done about three or four, scale it up to a couple of uh, two-shot deals. Then some four-shot deals. Then a couple of eight-shot deals. Sure. This is going to take up time, but it's building up confidence at the table, finding your voice, getting your style, doing it your way. And eventually, once you're running 16 or th and 32 session games, you're in campaign mode. You are up to a point, particularly at 32, you're running a year plus of material, assuming that you're actually doing it four hours a week, every other week. 
you're doing a year plus material, you're running a long running campaign that you know will get there because you understand and can embrace all the key elements. That story overalls, that's your GMing way of doing it because you feel good about it. The art of losing and why it's so critical to being a great GM and ultimately what it will then do is because you've had experience at the table, understand all the facets and maneuverings and why all these confidence videos will then click into place is because of this video here and it should all make perfect sense I hope. I hope you've enjoyed it. Anyway I've been Sean Connors rambling a little but had a great deal of fun to share it with you. My tips around this and why it's great to be a GME loser and I hope you've enjoyed that. Anyway uh, take care of yourselves and happy gaming and I'll see you in the next video uh, for something a little bit special should this video hit 50 likes and what is that you're probably asking yourself well I want to leave you with a teaser and that was you saw the dice app program well that program will be coming into one of my videos the next video hopefully to determine a winner of a free RPG product uh, many of you entered and many of you have already been accepted for that we're going to find out in the next video who wins it and we're also going to see some uh, some brilliant products that I found recently which I want to share with you where I got them from and just share some news and bits and bobs which I think will be really good fun anyway take care of yourselves until that bonus video I hope that will come until the next time happy gaming and see you soon bye bye <music>